So far, we focused mostly on monocyclic hydrocarbons with one ring that are fully conjugated in the discussion of aromaticity and anti-aromaticity. In this video, we're going to look at other types of aromatic compounds, anulenes, polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, and aromatic heterocycles containing a heteroatom within the ring. Let's start with anulenes, and anulenes may be aromatic, anti-aromatic, or non-aromatic if they're in the non-planar conformation. Anuline is just a generic term for a cyclic, fully conjugated hydrocarbon consisting of alternating single and double bonds. And we put a number out in front in brackets, in square brackets, indicating the size of the ring of the anuline. So for example, cyclobutadiene is equivalent to four anuline with four atoms in the ring. Benzene is equivalent to 6-anuline, and these terms are, are very rarely used. Where the term anuline gets most useful is when you get to ring sizes of, say, 9 or higher, where the names get awkward, right? Naming gets awkward. So, for example, 10-anuline is just a fully cyclic conjugated hydrocarbon, uh, fully conjugated cyclic hydrocarbon with 10 carbons in it with alternating single and double bonds. And if we count the carbons around the ring here, we see that there are indeed 10 carbons. And these can have uh, cis-trans or EZ issues as well. Generally, we're not going to worry about those, but that's worth thinking about in these larger ring sizes in particular, that double bonds can be either cis or trans. Polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons contain more than one um, aromatic ring fused together. And by fused here, we mean that two rings are sharing a bond. So for example, in naphthalene, naphthalene looks like two benzene rings fused together with this bond highlighted in purple shared between the two benzene rings. And naphthalene is aromatic, and that's actually worth verifying on your own. Pause the video and verify that this molecule is, is aromatic. It is cyclic, it's fully conjugated, it's planar, and it does contain a Huckel number of 4n plus 2 pi electrons. The other examples, we can have more than two rings fused together. For example, in anthracene, those three rings can be fused together in a linear way in anthracene or in kind of an angular way. That's what's going on in phenan 3. We can have rings fused along multiple bonds. So for example, in pyrene, this ring here has a fusing bond here, here, and here. Get this kind of honeycomb shape. Azulene and oxaazulinone here are what are known as non-benzenoid aromatic compounds because they don't contain benzene rings. All of these top four structures, we can find benzene rings within the structures, right? If we look individually at the rings, they're six-membered. They look like benzene rings. Azulene has a seven-membered and a five-membered ring and is a really interesting compound that actually exhibits polarization. I won't get into that in any more detail. And oxaazulinone is technically a heterocycle, but I wanted to highlight it because it may not appear aromatic. After all, if we just count the pi bonds, I've got two, four, six, eight electrons. This kind of looks anti-aromatic, but don't forget that heteroatoms can participate in pi systems as well. And an alternative resonance form of this molecule involving pushing these, this lone pair on oxygen into a pi bond with the carbon next door shows that, in fact, there are two, four, six, eight, ten pi electrons in this resonance form, showing us that this molecule is, in fact, aromatic as a result of the 10 pi electrons. So on this slide, we looked at anulenes and polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons. Recognition that this oxygen is participating in the aromaticity of this molecule is a nice segue into aromatic heterocycles. Hugely, hugely important. Found in a wide variety of compounds, for example, in biochemistry. And this slide features compounds that are biochemical containing aromatic heterocycles. So for example, in the top left here, we see a five-membered ring containing nitrogen fused to a benzene ring. This whole system highlighted in yellow is known as the endole system. We have two nitrogens in this five-membered imidazole ring and histidine, and these two compounds, tryptophan and histidine, are natural amino acids. The nicotinamide group or nicotinamide molecule contains what's called a pyridine ring, six-membered ring with nitrogen, and this is very important because it's found in NAD plus and NADH. These are biochemical cofactors used for oxidation and reduction respectively, and we'll see them when we discuss those topics later in the course in 2312 LS. The four molecules along the bottom are probably the most important and well-known 
nitrogen-containing heterocycles in biochemistry. These are the nitrogenous bases of DNA, and we can see a large number of nitrogen atoms in the rings of these structures, all of which are aromatic. All of these highlighted system, ring systems are aromatic. So aromatic rings, hugely important in biochemistry and well beyond, of course. With aromatic heterocycles, some interesting questions arise. You know, the basic question of what makes these compounds aromatic. Actually, Huckel's rule and all of those criteria that we've seen previously still apply, but there are some wrinkles with the lone pairs brought in by heteroatoms. We want to know what role do those lone pairs play? Are they part of the aromatic pi system or not? Are they basic or Bronsted or Lewis basic or not? What can resonance reveal about aromatic heterocycles? Those heteroatoms exert interesting effects by pushing or pulling electrons, and we can depict that and understand that using resonance. And then finally, we'll think about aromatic heterocycles and reactions. How are they similar to aromatic hydrocarbons, and how are they different? We're going to keep that question at the top of our minds moving forward as we move into aromatic reactivity. The bottom of this slide highlights some examples of common heterocycles. I won't go through all the names, but it's a good idea to familiarize yourselves with these names, again, just to make reading and studying organic chemistry easier as you move forward. Aromatic heterocycles are conjugated systems, so now is a good point to recall our coverage of the structures of heteroatoms within conjugated systems. All of those ideas apply here in the context of aromatic heterocycles. We want to keep in mind, for example, that heteroatoms that are not engaged in pi bonding can contribute one and only one lone pair to the aromatic pi system, and a given heteroatom can never contribute more than two electrons to a pi system. Still true in a heteroaromatic context, and in fact, this ring right here, pyridine, is an aromatic heterocycle. So let's walk through this um, listing of atom types in conjugated systems one more time. So first we've got the carbon, and carbon is typically involved in pi bonds in conjugated systems and heterocycles, uh, aromatic heterocycles and aromatic hydrocarbons. And so carbon typically contributes one pi electron via its pi bonding with an atom next door. The N2 nitrogen, remember, is involved in pi bonding, and so it contributes one pi electron via that pi bond. And the lone pair is not involved in the aromatic pi system. And so this is not pi electrons, and it's free to be donated as a Lewis or Bronsted base as a result. The N3 nitrogen has a lone pair that is part of the pi system, however, and we know this because that nitrogen is not involved in pi bonding, three single bonds, and so this lone pair can occupy a p orbital, and it will do so when there's a double bond next door, such that, or a p orbital next door more generally, such that it can delocalize itself like so. The O1 oxygen has a pi bond, that's a carbonyl oxygen. And this you won't find inside a heterocycle, but it may be attached to an aromatic heterocycle. For example, if we look at thymine, this O1 oxygen is in conjugation, we would say, with the ring highlighted in yellow. It's got a p orbital, that oxygen, that is overlapping with the p orbitals on this carbon here. And the, so the O1 oxygen contributes one pi electron, and its two lone pairs are part of the sigma system not the pi system. Those are not pi electrons. Similarly with the O2 oxygen, it has one lone pair now that is not part of the pi system, but because it has only single bonds, no pi bonding, it this lone pair is capable of occupying a p orbital, and it will do so when there are p orbitals next door to delocalize. And so that oxygen can contribute two electrons to the pi system. And in fact, this is yet another important aromatic heterocycle furan showing up with the O2 oxygen. 